Hello, friends. Here we are with another tough topic. Now, I want you to hang on. If you're out exercising or running or doing laundry or whatever you're doing uh, and you're listening to this, maybe going down the road, you need to turn it up because I don't want you to miss a beat of the show. Uh, We've got today's topic is called the root problem of sex trafficking. And you might be saying, well, that doesn't apply to me, sex trafficking, et cetera. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got an internet in your home. You have other family members in your home. You need to be listening in. Uh, It's a tough topic. I hate this topic. I was telling our guests that, but it needs to be spoken and we need to talk about it. That's why we brought it forward. We've got a wonderful guest with us today, Laura Mulliken, and her husband, Todd, has been on our show many times talking about families and the family dynamics. He's a wonderful counselor. Please look those shows up. But we have his better half with us, Laura Mulliken. Laura Mulliken is the executive director of traffickingjustice.com. Traffickingjustice.com. That's what I want you to remember. And it is a nonprofit that works to end sexual exploitation and sex trafficking in the state of Minnesota. Now, this just doesn't impact Minnesota. We are broadcast throughout the United States uh, after it leaves our radio show. It goes up to podcasts everywhere. And I think it's really important that we learn about what is the root problem of this. If there's pornography going on in your home, if there's any of that stuff, listen in, people, because this show is going to bring awareness to what to do, how to deal with it, and what not to do. So, Laura, so thankful that you're on your sh- our show. Thank you so much. Please listen to the first one, friends, as we talked about what does sex trafficking look like, what to watch out for, and what to do about it. And now we're going to talk about the root problem of sex trafficking. Are you ready, Laura? I'm ready. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. This is, a, I don't want to talk about this, but we have to talk about this. It's like, oh, it's a, we have to do this for the Lord. So I'm going to start out with scripture, friends, um, from Proverbs 31.8. It says, speak up. I'm going to repeat it. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves, for the rights of all who are destitute. And that's God's word speaking to us. And so what, Laura, is the root problem of sex trafficking? Sex trafficking, we used to think of it as a global problem or an over there problem, but the truth is it's a human problem that has reached a global epidemic. Um, I live in Minnesota, which much of it is rural, and we often think about, oh, the sex trafficking is an urban problem or it's a suburban problem, but the truth is we're now in our fourth year running of We're on track to have sex trafficking related charges in every county in the state of Minnesota for four years in a row. Mm -hmm. So that says to me that it's a people problem and it does not know the boundaries of social or racial or uh, economic divides, right? It's a sin problem, girl. Amen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I think. Much of that is driven by the fact that we live in such a sexualized culture today, Shug. Um, If you cannot watch like a late night television um, comedy routine or monologue without hearing a joke about some kind of sexual peccadillo or uh, a pornography joke. Uh, and, And that is just norm. So that is what our, our, particularly our Gen Z and below are growing up in, right? They're growing up in a sex saturated culture. And unfortunately, those messages are not messages that would be in alignment with God's best for us or his biblical principles for sex. They are, in my opinion, Satan's cheap counterfeits of God's good gift of sex. Mm -hmm. Amen. So I think that's that's really a, a root cause because the culture has made it acceptable to take on these ideas of um, sexual pleasure in being synonymous with pain or punishment or cruelty or self-gratification versus um mutual pleasure and mutual submission. Um, 
Actually, it, I think scripturally, I think there's a part of it that goes all the way back to the garden, honestly, because when you think about God giving Adam and Eve at the crown of creation saying, uh, you know, he created male and female, he created them in his own image, and he said it is very good. They were the only thing that was very good. And then he gave them this instruction to go out and have dominion. but. When you read that scripture in context, he said to give them dominion in the context of the world being perfect still, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? So it it we've we've gotten this domination of the world or domination of another sex. It's it's a counterfeit from Satan. It is a a mistelling of God's best way for us to actually exercise our autonomy, our dominion, our authority that is God-given. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think those are really, that's probably more theological than some people want to get, but I think that's really what's underneath this brokenness that we see in sexual mm -hmm. spaces in our world. So I was talking to my husband about, he asked what the topics are today and I shared with him about the root problem and he was standing there with another gentleman and who we love, great Christian man. And he goes, well, what is root pro problem? And I said, man, but, <laughs> but you, you tell me otherwise. Why don't you share a little bit about that root problem? Who are the buyers? I think it's, I think the root problem is really goes back to both of us having our image misshapen or distorted by the enemy. Um, so the the buyers are often most often males in our american context here um, however we're seeing growth in the sector of women also being the perpetrators or the buyers so um, sex trafficking is a little bit it falls within the umbrella of sexual exploitation where i'm using someone else or taking advantage of someone else uh, for my own sexual gratification right so it's like the crooked landlord who mom falls behind on the rent and she is encouraged to sell her teenage daughter to the crooked landlord and he'll give her a pass on the rent that would fall under sexual exploitation and it's evil right sex trafficking involves three people it involves the victim who is being sold most often in our context a woman but it can be a male as well is that person um, is it usually against their will um at some level at, yes it is against their will um, although I will say that if you have grown up um, in abuse or with sexual violation of your, your boundaries, um, and then someone comes in and rescues you from that situation and then turns around and sells you, you maybe my, my idea of what love is or a relationship is, is so skewed or distorted already that I might tell you that this is what I, I've believed the enemy's lies, that this is what I was for, or I chose this, or I did something to find myself here. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes they'll tell you it's not against their will, but often um, if you really dig below the surface, even scratch below the surface, you'll find that that's a distortion of their reality or their thoughts. So you've got the three people, you've got the, the victim, and then you have the buyer who is purchasing someone else's body for their own gratification. And then you have a seller who is profiting off of that. So um, it takes three people to actually be in this trafficking situation. And when you think about the trafficker, they are highly motivated. It is money, right? It is money in the bank to them. It's a lot of money, actually. Um, and unlike other criminal enterprises, like if I'm selling you a weapon or a drug, I sell it to you and then I need to go and re resupply, right? Mm -hmm. I need to get new mm -hmm. supply. Whereas I've had a, a former pimp tell me I got into away from drugs and moved into selling girls and women because 
there's always another one out there and I can sell them over and over and over again until they're Those used. Poor up. victims. Those poor victims. That just breaks my heart. So there's just, yeah, that, that power and control mm-hmm. dynamic and they are highly motivated for the money. Whereas the buyer, if you take a step back and you look at their situation, I think they're highly entitled, right? Like, I think that I have the right somehow, if I pay enough money to use another human being, however I want to use them for my own purposes, my own gratification, Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. is a lot of entitlement. And the victim is that third person and they are highly vulnerable because they are in or under the control of one or the other of these Mm -hmm. two other elements. You know, I learned from Annie LoBear, who was a prostitute for a long time on on Hookers for Jesus, the show we did. Please look that up. But she talked about oftentimes the victim may go into it. uh, They make it sound all glamorous. Well, then they get hooked on drugs because the pimp is supplying. Then they get beaten to a pulp because they're not giving them all the money or enough money or not working hard enough. And and then the buyers on the other end, you know, I can't help it, but get super angry that those buyers on the other end are hiring and paying for this girl to be a slave. Yes. And if there was no need and there wasn't any uh, opportunity, there wouldn't be any prostitution and there wouldn't be any sex trafficking. So it really is boiling down to the buyer. I mean, yeah. I think the buyer could be in your own home and you don't even know about it. What, what would a buyer in your home look like? Let's say your spouse is on pornography or let's say, you know, they're doing something uh, that, you know, is not right and not honoring it in your marriage. What does that look like? Mm -hmm. Could you share with us? Yeah. I think people who become aware that their spouse might be having um, issues in this area or might Mm -hmm. be dabbling with uh, pornography addiction. Um, Not everyone who watches pornography purchases pornography, but I have a police officer friend who says that virtually every person they've arrested for purchasing sex tells a story of having begun with pornography. Mm -hmm. It's a gateway. So Mm -hmm. it is, it is really a gateway and it is changing the shape and, and landscape of what sex normalized sex behaviors look like. And it wasn't what got it intended. I mean, it was such a perversion. The enemy has taken something beautiful and perverted it in such a way it's destroying marriages and families. Yes. So I would, I would say, you know, if, if you have not only a spouse, but like a, a teenager, boy or girl who suddenly shuts down their laptop every time someone comes into the room or they're spending inordinate amount of time in their locked behind their, you know, doors mm-hmm. on mm-hmm. their electronics. I mean, we can also have gaming addictions or other things like that as well. Um, but I, I would say um, watching what the online content is and even, um, you know, maybe having some family discussions about online uh, content and use and how setting it up so that everyone in the house can see what sites you visited. Um, And I think that's, that's a good thing too, for our kids and our teens to say, oh, this isn't just something mom and dad are telling me I have to do. They're actually allowing me to see their transparency as well. Mm -hmm. So that keeps mom and dad off of the pornographic sites as well. Well, and like you said in the first show, please listen to it, friends, because she talked about how the perpetrators come after your kids. Mm -hmm. How do they approach them? And it's a lot of it's through gaming chats and such, and they pretend they're somebody they're not. Uh, in, a, in a very innocent game. So you could actually be looking and saying, oh yeah, he's on that game. That's a G-rated game, but it's the chat section that you've got to be concerned about. And as well with the, with the trafficking, um, you know, the, the painful part is what if you find someone in your family, probably a spouse who is uh, buying any kind of the sex trafficking, what should you do as a spouse? Wow. Turn to Jesus first. (laughs) Um, And uh, he's given us the gift of the body of Christ. So I would say um, find a trusted friend or a trusted counselor 
who uh, can deal with the reality and the rawness, right? I, we all have friends who are a little too fragile for our most real self, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So find a strong friend, a shug, if you will, in your life that can really listen to the hard stuff and walk with you without judgment. You um, know, that's tough that's, though. I mean, you know, if any woman came up to you and shared, my husband's been buying uh, trafficked victims. I mean, you can't help but let your head go into that judgment realm. Yep. And and I, I agree with you. I mean, you know, we got the body of Christ. Uh, you know, go to your pastor if you can trust him. But a lot of women won't share even with a trusted friend because they're too embarrassed. Yeah. Why did my husband turn to that instead of me? Yeah. You know, I mean, what's, what's happening in that area? Uh, again, you've got the National Human Trafficking Hotline, which is 1-888-3737-888. 1-888, we'll have that posted, 37378888, and they can uh, help guide you as well. Um, would, you, would you approach and talk to your husband directly about it? I, I think, well, I, I always think transparency is good, right? Mm-hmm. I also recognize that some families have um, violence as a baseline or a you know, do you and, find it's common that the that the buyer is violent in his own home? Uh, not necessarily. It certainly is uh, a possibility. Um, I I wouldn't want to venture a guess on a percentage. Mm-hmm. I would say that that is not always the case. I do think that a, a sign is definitely a. Uh, withdrawal or uh, emotionally, especially, or um, if there are changes in behavior, uh, suddenly there's an unexplained second phone that's being uh, used by your spouse in those situations. Um, I, I think before approaching him directly, if this is really what I suspect it is, I think they're buying sex or they are perhaps flirting with a pornography addiction. I would go to a website like, it's not a Christian website, but it's really, really well done. Fight the new drug, mm. uh, FTND, fight the new drug. And they have empirical studies that have been done on the harms of pornography. They've also done studies on how we can actually rewire our brain and our heart uh, and our relationships effectively and live without sex buying or without pornography. So Fight the New Drug is a great resource. And the other thing I would reach out to see if my... uh, Community has a church that is running a Conquerors program. Conquerors. Conquerors program or a Covenant Eyes program. Those both have lots of, they're Christian programs and they have lots of resources that are both supportive for those who are sex buyers or caught up in a pornography addiction. And increasingly, they're also building supportive platforms for the spouse of that person. So um, there's encouragement and support there. What's the last one called? There and then have a conversation. Yeah. yeah. Did you what? What did you call the last one? Did you say um, coveted eye? Oh, covenant, 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 like the old and new covenant. It's covenant mm. eyes. Um, eyes, I e y e s, covenant yeah. eyes. They, okay. They have things as well, like. Um, my husband and I have both been accountability partners for people who've wrestled with addictions in pornography. And so mm-hmm. uh, they have online software that I will get a monthly or a weekly or a daily report if you and I are accountability partners. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I can see your um, on all of your devices. I can see anything that you've downloaded or oh. anything. That's a good thing. So that's, that's a good thing. Helpful. So if somebody's involved in buying, they've been part of, and participated in buying sex trafficking and they want to get out, um, are there other men that can walk alongside and help them? Is, are, is there any men that are helping in this area wanting to fight sex trafficking? Yes. Actually, both of those organizations that I just mentioned, Conquerors and Covenant Eyes, have uh, men who are facilitating groups, um, who are trying to come alongside of those who are wrestling with sexual addiction issues or Mm -hmm. uh, pornography or sex buying issues and try to 
walk alongside them, not only in an accountability fashion, but a discipleship fashion. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't know about you, but being just told what not to do has never really changed my behavior, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I have to actually have someone who can walk out what it looks like to live a fuller life without this thing that I need. Mm Because honestly, if I am out purchasing sex from someone else, there's a hole in my life that I am a void that I am trying to fill, uh, obviously in unhealthy ways. So Mm -hmm. Getting help, having someone help me get at what is that void in your life, or or why what what were you doing when you started thinking about buying? Were you lonely? Were you overly tired? Were you hungry? Yeah. You know, yeah. just all of those cues in ourselves. What mm-hmm. what am I in so desperately in need of that I'm trying to fill it with this unholy thing? Yeah, I was speaking to a gentleman who. Um, works in a, a, a sexual uh, prison. What's the word? That's not the word I'm looking for. Like a sex, sex, offender? Of, sex offender prison. Yep. And he was sharing with me, he's a counselor there, and he says of all of the crimes mm-hmm. that people commit, sex offenders are the hardest ones to work with where they don't return to what they originally did. And, you know, but we can do that by the power of the Lord. Amen. I mean, Jesus can do this. Jesus can heal. And, you know, friends, I don't want you... You know, I get really frustrated and mad about this as well. But, you know, Matthew tells us very clearly, if you do not forgive others their sins, your father will not forgive you your sins. And so it really starts with us uh, asking God to get the love thing right so we can reach out to people who are sinners and who are and have um, sinned against the Lord in this area And, you know, Jesus says, as far as the East is from the West, Mm. so far has he removed our sins from us. And that also can happen to anybody who has been an offender in this area. And in prison, it's very common for women to have been trafficked. Mm -hmm. uh, And and the reason why is so that they can get drugs, et cetera. They want to get high. Um, And it just breaks my heart that the buyers are out there. It's the buyers is the problem. And if we could start with the root of that problem, a lot of this would go away. Um, And so I love what you guys are doing at traffickingjustice.com. You guys, please look it up. Please donate and please help them in that area. So how can we be praying for you, uh, sweet Laura, for you and your family um, in this area? And what can we do to come alongside you? I think... Well, thank you so much. Um, I think as I walk alongside of individuals who've been trafficked or family members uh, who have had a college student or a daughter or a son who has been exploited, um, just that God would miraculously provide each of those families with a supportive faith community um, that is not going to shame them or ask, what did you do wrong with your parenting, Mm -hmm. but actually come alongside of them and love them and support them and love their child who was caught up in that situation as well. Um, Cover vulnerabilities, Um, pray that God would give us eyes to see other humans as someone to be covered rather than exposed to the world. Amen. Amen. Oh, Laura, you are amazing. Father God, I pray that you will hear these prayers and begin to answer them even before we ask them, because we know it's Jesus alone who heals us and heals our hearts. We are called to do what is right and just is more acceptable to the Lord than any sacrifice. You know I love you. Thank you so much, Laura Mulliken, for coming on. Thank you, Trafficking Justice, for everything you do. Shugbury, you know I love you. Over and out.